ABC 7 at 4, welcome back. I'm Nicole Gomez. As we've all watched the natural disaster unfold in Burridoso last week, everyone had the desire to help the small community that has been ravaged by the wildfires. Now, as we watch the news, so did criminals who will not hesitate to exploit you and others who want to help those who are in need in Ruidoso. And joining us now to talk about the natural disaster fraud scams is Special Agent Derek Hackard. Special Agent, Agent Hackard, thanks so much for joining us. And I know the FBI is reminding the community of natural disaster and charity fraud scams that will pop up, especially right now as our community gathers donations to help those in Ruidoso. Can you talk to us about fraud schemes, especially at this time where so many people have lost so much? Yes, thank you, Nicole. In charity fraud schemes, criminals pull on people's heartstrings in hopes of transforming their compassion into cash. But instead of using those donations to help others, the creators of these fake organizations use the funds for personal gain or for other illicit purposes. Pleas for help may come across different platforms such as email, text messages, crowdfunding sites such as GoFundMe, social media, and cold calling to solicit donations. Be careful, in addition to lining their own pockets with your generous donations, scammers may also be after your personal and financial information. So do you have any tips for us before making financial contributions? Yes, keep these tips in mind before making a financial contribution. First, only donate to established charities or groups whose work you know or trust. Do your research. Use the Federal Trade Commission's resources to examine the track record of a charity. If an organization has a copycat name or a name similar to a reputable group, take caution. Likewise, if a new organization claims to help victims of recent high-profile disasters, be wary. Most legitimate charity organizations end in .org rather than .com. And you also want to avoid charities that ask you to pay by cash, gift card, virtual currency, or wire transfer. We recommend paying by credit card or writing a check directly to the charity and not to an individual. Okay, so those are simple tips to follow when donating to a charity. But what happens if a scammer gets a hold of your email address or sends you a text message? How do we handle this? Yes, excellent question. If someone you don't know emails or texts you, don't click on any links or open any attachments they send you. You should independently verify any requests from persons or businesses that may or may not be associated with. Don't provide personal information to emails, robocalls, or robo robotexts. And once the rebuild starts, after any natural disaster, you want to carefully vet any contractors before hiring them to work on your home or business. We all want to help those in need. We just want to make sure your donations are going to the people in need and not to the scammers. I totally, totally agree with you. Now, we have to make sure the donations get into the hands of the right people. So if someone feels they have become a victim of charity fraud, what steps should they take? Yes, please contact the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center at www.ic3.gov, or you can call our local office at 915-832-5000. Special Agent Derek Hackard, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. We'll be right back.